to enter the world of urban legends, where fact is often stranger than fiction. Sometimes it's hard to tell the difference between truth and urban legend. In the land of urban legends, you will see three stories. Two of them never happened, but one actually did. Can you tell which one is a true story? Twister Toss, a young man is sucked up by a tornado, thrown over a thousand feet, and he lives to tell the tale. Tanning Bed Blindness, a woman loses her sight when her contact lens melts under the lights. Cow Boom, a buildup of methane gas from a cow causes a fiery and deadly explosion. Three tales from the wilder side of life, but which one is true? Watch all three, then decide, and we'll tell you if you're right at the end of the show. First up, Twisting the Night Away. Tornado Alley. It's the name given to an area of the United States known for its high incidence of tornadoes each year. From Texas to North Dakota and Ohio in the east, the alley involves 18 states. One of them is Missouri. And that's where 19-year-old Matt Suter was living at the time of his twister encounter. March 12, 2006, 10.30 p.m. Matt picks up the story. You know, we kept hearing on the news, there's tornado warnings. A tornado has touched down, and at the first sign of trouble, Matt realizes it's too late to escape to safety. It was really loud, really, really loud. It was just crazy what was going on. The windows were busting from the inside out because you know, there was so much pressure in the house. And it sounded like a freight train, like three or four of them coming. You hear that sound and you know something bad's gonna happen, you really don't wanna hear that sound. This tornado was moving at 150 miles an hour and the trailer Matt called home was right in its path. Matt lives with his grandmother. Meet Linda Kelly. She's witnessed a few tornadoes in her day, but nothing like this. Matthew. I got to the kitchen to tape something over the window. And I thought, oh my God, you know, it, we're, something's happening. The tornado, rated an F2, is capable of causing considerable damage, tearing roofs from homes, pushing over train cars, snapping off large trees and demolishing mobile homes. The twister took hold of their trailer. I, I just try and protect my face and my head as much as possible because I didn't want no glass getting in my eyes or anything like that. Linda tried to check on her grandson, but she was met with a terrifying sight. I turned around and looked and he was gone. That whole end of the trailer was gone. But about that same time, the lights went out. I couldn't see anything. I couldn't see the furniture. I couldn't see him. I couldn't see anything. And he never did holler. You know, he just, he was just gone. Matt, along with the section of the trailer he was in, had quite literally vanished ripped from the part of the trailer where his grandmother was. A short while later, Matt reappears. He's in a field a considerable distance from where the trailer once stood. Matt, shaken, cut, and bruised, makes his way to his neighbor's house. What the hell happened to you? Are you okay? Oh, Jesus, come on in, come in. Matt worries about his grandmother, so they go back to the place where he last saw her. There, the two are reunited. Oh, happy. The section of trailer Linda was in had been left intact. She was wedged between the floor and the kitchen table. I was just so glad to see him. He had blood all over him, kind of scared me, but he was all right. Oh, my God. But Matt needed medical attention. We just went to the hospital and they gave me five stitches in my head from where I got hit in the head, pulled glass, 
gravel, thorns, everything on my feet. And then, you know, they sent us home. This catapult illustrates the kind of force someone could experience in a tornado. And to demonstrate how Matt may have been tossed by the twister, here's the expert, known only as Tornado Tim. When the person gets caught in a tornado, they're caught in the updraft first, they'll be lifted off the ground. The debris is going to be pelting them. Sooner or later, they're going to be moved from that updraft and the debris hitting them into the winds or the spin of the tornado. Once you get caught in that spin, the centrifugal force will take over and it'll grab a hold of you and it'll catapult you out of the tornado. You're going to fly out. That was about 150, maybe 200 feet at the best. So Matt would have gone over five times that distance. He'd gone even further than this whole field, which is unbelievable. With the help of a wind machine, Tim shows us how powerful the updraft can be inside a tornado. In this controlled environment, they're making it look like you can just float around and have fun inside of a tornado. Well, no, it's not gonna be like this. There is stuff flying into you the lamps and, and the glass windows and uh, the spoons and knives and forks are all coming loose inside of that and it's gonna be flying around at velocities of 100 miles an hour or more into you, into your body. So you're not gonna float like these guys are. If you're caught in a tornado, you're gonna be beat up pretty bad. So did Matt really fly over 1,000 feet through a debris-filled raging F2 tornado and live? Is this true? We're gonna leave you twisting in the wind until the end of the show. In the meantime, try this mini myth. Mini myth number 22, the barrel of pain. Ingenious builder Gary Kurnot was faced with the problem of moving a heavy load of bricks from the roof of a building to the ground. He devises a plan to lower them in a barrel using a rope and a pulley. But when he unties the rope, the barrel of bricks is so heavy, it pulls him up to the roof. The barrel hits him on its way down, and when he reaches the top, his hand gets jammed in the pulley. The barrel hits the ground and bursts, causing him to fall down onto the bricks. The broken barrel then comes back down and hits him on the head. You could say Gary wasn't having a good day. True story? No, it was false. This story was first told in 1918 and has been played out in comedies, television shows, skits, and of course retold many times, but it's just an urban legend. There are three main stories on urban legends. One is true and actually happened. The other two are myths. You must decide which is which. So far, you've seen a young man who survived being hurled over a thousand feet by a tornado. Now, did contact lenses melt in a tanning bed, causing a woman to become blind? We'll tell the truth at the end of the show. They say beauty is in the eye of the beholder. For others, the quest for that perfect look is a never-ending pursuit. And the woman in this story knows that all too well. Meet Ona Zemaitis from Vilnius, Lithuania. My looks are my own. I have natural, beautiful bone structure. I do not wrinkle. Um, I turn well. But Ona does not own up to the truth. She is constantly seeking treatment from the country's top therapists and cosmetic surgeons. Meet Petronius Lind. I strive to create perfection, to make a woman beautiful. It is a magical thing Petronius does. He turns back time. Ona is unhappy with one aspect of her appearance. It's her glasses, and she's determined to do something about it. It starts with a visit to Dr. Alexander Raymond. Petronius arrange, arranges this for me.
Dr. Raymond fits me with lenses, um, contact lenses. I can see correctly for first time since childhood. Ona is content with her new look, but something is missing. She decides to get the perfect tan, and a tanning salon is her next stop. But tanning, it's so boring. Lay back in a um, tanning table and um, wake up 30 minutes later, all done. The routine procedure begins. The tanning bed is designed to concentrate the ultraviolet rays on Ona's body. But the light was doing more than just tan. She doesn't realize the goggles are there for her safety, a mistake that will cost her her sight. I um, woke up by sharp, burning pain in my eyes. I'm uh, screaming in agony. I try to open my eyes. It is like uh, they are glued shut, shut tight. No one no one hurts my scream. I pull my eyelid open. It hurts so bad. I begin to pull at it. It is stuck fast. Ona scratches at her eyes and manages to pull the lenses out. But one cornea is badly damaged. She is left partially blind. The lenses she was wearing are faulty manufactured with inferior materials. They melted under the glow of the tanning bed lights. She sues Dr. Raimond. For Ona, however, she can and does try to look on the bright side. I cry, of course, but tears cannot turn back time. And all of the money in the world cannot buy me back my eyes. I'm still beautiful, and, but I just cannot see it in the mirror. A courageous outlook on life, to be sure. But was this a true story? Can contact lenses really melt in a tanning bed? Don't decide just yet, as there is one more story to come. While you're waiting, cast your gaze on this mini-myth. Mini-myth number 358. A very firm mattress. Timaru, New Zealand. A man who had had too much to drink was looking for a place to lie down. And he saw what he thought was a bed of soft moss. He soon discovered that it was not the soft bed he thought it was. It was wet concrete colored green for a decorative touch in a housing development. He woke to find he was buried in it up to his neck. It was three days before he was finally spotted by a passing motorist. Strange tale, but was it true or false? Although the story seems strange, it is true, and was reported by the independent newspaper of London in March of 1995. There are hundreds of urban legends out there, but we'll just show you three, one of which is real. It's up to you to figure out which one actually happened. So far, you've seen the guy who was tossed over a thousand feet by a tornado, and the woman who was blinded after her contact lenses melted in a tanning bed. But now, it's time for our third and decidedly disturbing story. Methane gas from a cow causes a deadly explosion. We'll tell you what story is real at the end of the show. The Holstein cow. They can produce up to 3,000 gallons of milk annually. They consume vast amounts of grain feed. And as a 
result, produce over 100 gallons of methane gas daily. It's the methane gas produced by one particular cow that is at the center of this story. Meet Elka. Now meet the dedicated hard-working dairy farmers that used to tend to Elka, Jan van Dijk and Bob the Young. Sturksil Holland. The story involving these two men and Elka the cow takes place when they are just starting out in the dairy business. I uh, started in 1985, but in uh, 1986 I was a farmer for a year and I uh, had um, a herd of cows. Used to milk those cows in the morning. <laughs> you know, you have, had to milk the cows by hand and that was uh, a pretty hard job. Well, there was this beautiful cow, Elke, one of our favorites. She was always giving me a bucket full of milk and she was like, yeah, a good cow. Best milk, you know, real lady. One morning I uh, I sit behind Elke and I'm milking her and uh, she's farting and uh, when I laugh about it and um, after about 10 minutes I, I lit a cigarette and uh, she farts at the same moment. Something like a fireball comes into my face and my, my face is burnt, you know. His face was all red, right, and he, his eyebrows were all burned off. It was hilarious, man, I tell you that. He laughed his head off, he just kept on laughing, laughing and uh, well I had to laugh too because I saw him laughing and the whole situation was quite funny. The farmer learned the hard way that methane gas is highly flammable and potentially quite dangerous. Methane's explosive properties are well documented. Meet Dr. John Kilcoin of the Institute of Pharmacy and Chemistry of Britain's University of Sunderland. I can show you what a litre of inflammable gas will do by putting light to it like this. This humorous tale should have ended here, but the young and mischievous oh, farmers are intrigued oh, by this yeah, phenomenon yeah. and are about to take it one step further. Because if that first detonation was interesting, wouldn't a really huge explosion be even more interesting? So they come up with the idea of feeding the cow a potent mixture of methane-inducing feed. They even invite their friend to the farm to witness the result. I was rubbing her belly in, and Ubrich was like, oh, where is it, where is it, you know, and puff! The fireball produced by Elka was indeed huge, but instead of just burning off, the flame had somehow been sucked back into Elka. No one could have predicted what happened next. No animals were harmed during the making of this story. The whole cow exploded. Everywhere. Big bang, well, you've never seen an explosion like that. Well, finally, I was the unlucky one who had his face right at her back, and uh, so I lost my eye, and uh, that, that's how we lost Elka. The farmers learned a valuable lesson that day, one that's not taught in high school chemistry class. But is it true? Did a cow really explode from a buildup of methane gas? Think about it as you ponder another explosive mini-myth. Mini-myth number 18. Anyone got a light? July 2006, a patient in the hospital with a severe lung ailment was wearing a non-removable oxygen mask to help him breathe. He still craved cigarettes despite his damaged chest. So he decided to light up the smoke while still wearing his mask. He sparked the flammable gas into a fire that destroyed the room and forced the evacuation of more than 100 patients. So was that tale true or just hot air? Actually, it was true. The patient survived and was treated with severe burns. It's time to tell the truth about our three stories. 
Did a tornado really throw a young man a record-setting distance? And did he live to tell all? Did a woman go blind when her contacts melted on her eyes in a tanning bed? Or did a cow really blow up from too much methane gas? First, let's have a look at the contact lens story. Did they really melt under the tanning bed? Did this woman go blind as a result? No, it's false. The story and variations of it have been around since the 70s. The number of stories increased on the internet when tanning beds became popular. Tanning beds use UV light, and they recommend the safety goggles so that your eyes avoid damage by the simulated sunlight. UV light can brown skin, but can't melt plastic. It just didn't happen. So that leaves the tornado-tossed guy and the exploding cow. If you thought a cow could explode from the methane it produces, then you'd be absolutely wrong. What is true is that bovine flatulence is a flammable gas, methane, but it needs oxygen for it to burn. Without it, it's just, well, gas. A variation of this story was featured in James Elliott's book, All Creatures Great and Small. And a similar story was reported in 1979 in Holland, but both times it resulted in barn fires, when the oxygen-methane mixture burned in the air outside the cow. Cows just can't explode. The truth is better out than in. So that leaves us with the guy who was sucked into a tornado and thrown over a quarter of a mile. Incredible, but absolutely true. And that suitor lived to tell the tale. I don't remember being lifted in the air because I was unconscious and everything. They said if I was uh, conscious, then, you know, my body would be all tensed up and everything, and then I'd be uh, more injured than what I was. The whole twisted experience has taught Matt a lesson for life. I don't take things for granted no more. Because, like I said, you know, I could have died that night. I don't know, I just keep that in my mind. Live every day to the fullest because you don't know when you're going to go. <laughs> Are you okay? Like all good and true stories, you could say this one is just a strange twister of fate. But did you guess correctly and choose Matt's story as the truth? Well, if not, We'll give you another shot on the next episode of Urban Legends. <laughs>